holiday, everybody. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and of course, Happy New Year. It's coming up just right around the corner. And speaking about around the corner, well, soon that ball will be dropping around the corner in Times Square, New York. And that's where we are, just around the corner from Times Square here at the very beautiful Sony Hall. We're certainly not going to be as cold as the people who are going to be out in Times Square. It is hot in here. It is packed for another edition of Boxing Insider Promotions. Welcome, everybody. I'm Randy G., the commish, hey. with my longtime partner, Jerry big Cooney. man, gentleman Jerry Cooney. And tonight, this is basically a super card for a super holiday attraction. We got super flyweights. We got super bantamweights. We got super welterweights and super middleweights. It's super. It's super. It is a super card, Jerry. And one of the fights that we have on, and this one is in the middleweight division, is Anthony Sims, who's 22-1 and one with 20 knockouts against Antonio Todd. And what makes Anthony Sims so special is he's the cousin of who? Floyd Mayweather. So yeah. he's excited. He's got a lot of knockouts, 22 wins, just one loss, 20 knockouts. So we're going to see if some great fights. And we got a, a female battle on the card, two sensational fights. you speak about them? Yes, she is. Jerry, that's Sulem Urbina. She's 13-2. and two, And the young lady she's going up against, now you're going to cringe for a moment. The young lady, Indiah Smith out of New Orleans, is 5-6. and six. And you would say, wait a minute, 13-2 and two against 5-6. and six. But this... Ms. Smith certainly can fight despite her record. She can pull the upset of the night tonight. So we got to stay close and watch it. A great female, female battle on the card. A great crowd. We're styling, bro. Yep. And, of course, there's oh, oh, more. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> we said it's super. We've got a super flyweight matchup between one of the prospects of the year. The guy's name is Andy Dominguez. He's 8-0. We saw him about a yes, month sir. ago right wow. here. He won on a very impressive knockout going up against... Marvin Solano of Nicaragua, and this kid can fight, Jerry. And he can fight, and he brings a big crowd with him. He's a fan favorite. People love him, and yes, he delivers. He's a big puncher. We're going to see a lot from him in the future, and it's a great place to get started for him. He, second fight here in a row. That's a, a, it tells a great story. It is Boxing Insider Promotions Holiday Special. Please join us here. It's going to be one heck of a night of boxing in New York City. You got that right. We're starting this card in just a moment. Let's get up to our ring announcer, Marvelous Marvin, who's standing by. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Sony Hall and welcome to Holiday Fight Night. Tonight's boxing action at Holiday Fight Night here at Sony Hall is brought to you by Boxing Insider. It is under the supervision and sanctioning of the New York State Athletic Commission. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, before we begin the festivities, I ask that you all please rise and remain silent as we observe a memoriam of figures the boxing world unfortunately recently lost. The great competitor and Irish Bobby Cassidy and referees Steve Smoger and Mills Lane, please remain silent as we toll the bell ten times. action. I'd like to start with our opening ceremonies. Please welcome to the microphone at this time, acclaimed recording artist and singer, Miss Chrissy Ardito, as she sings our national anthem. What's 
so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming whose blood stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the red parts we watch we're so gallantly streaming and the rockets rattle the bombs burst ding in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Everybody. Thank you, Miss Chrissy Ardino, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful rendition of the national anthem. And we're moments away from bout number one here on Boxing Insider Promotions. And they promise one action packed card tonight. In and a now, ladies and gentlemen, you saw them as you came in. Please welcome our house mariachi band for the performance of the Mexican National Anthem. National Anthem. Great job by that mariachi band and great job by our female singer of the National Anthem. Here from Sony Hall. And it's looking like our first bout is going to be in the middleweight division and jerry what a way to start it off if this is indeed the first fight of the night between two middleweights 
One is 19-0-1. The other is 19-1-0. The undefeated fighter is Alejandro Luis Silva. And the 19-1 is Isa Samir. So we do believe this is the fight that we're going to be seeing. And I can't wait because what a show opener this one could be. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sony Hall and welcome to Fight Holiday Fight Night brought to you by Boxing Insider. Ladies and gentlemen, the boxing action begins with our opening contest taking place inside of eight rounds in the middleweight division. Shade Murda is the referee in charge of the action. Introducing first, about to make his way to the blue corner. Here is Isa Samir! Isa Samir making his way into the ring. He fights out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and he comes from Accra, Ghana. He weighed in at yesterday's weigh-in at the New York State Athletic Commission at 156 pounds. He stands five foot nine, and he's 33 years old. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Making his way to the red corner, his opponent, here is Alejandro Luis Silva. Yeah, we've been hearing all about Alejandro Silva. He's got a 19-0-1 record. He has scored 14 knockouts. He stands 5'10". At the win, he weighed 156.4. He's 29 years old, and he fights at Buenos Aires. Argentina and of course Jerry I think one of the greatest fighters of all time in this very division in the middleweight division Carlos Monzon came from Buenos Aires in the world boxing council yep the WBC has Silva at number 28 and you know a victory here tonight against his 19-1 opponent could probably move him up a few more notches and maybe by the this time next year we'll be in the top 10 let's see this is a very important fight for both guys you know i'm looking up at samir and it looks very dry he didn't warm up much in the locker room it's surprising usually you come out you're a little bit warmed up yeah and jerry you you always point that out about a guy being looking like he's sweating a little bit that is very important, isn't it? Keep your body warmed up to, to get loose, to be ready. And he's very dry. I don't know, maybe it's his... We're going to find out tonight. Maybe it's just his style. It's Let's hard get, to believe. You know what? I'm ready to start this, so it's Marvelous Matt. And he takes it away. Ladies and gentlemen, this middleweight contest takes place inside of eight rounds. Shade Murdoch is the referee in charge of the action. John Mazzilli, Anthony Lundy, and Marcel Morella are our ringside judges. Introducing first, competing out of the blue corner. From Las Vegas, Nevada, standing five feet nine inches tall, weighing it at 156 pounds, entering this contest with a record of 19 and one, with 16 of his 19 victories by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Isa Samir! And his opponent, competing out of the red corner, from Avellaneda, Buenos Aires, Argentina, standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 156.4 pounds, entering this bout 
with an immaculate record of 19 and 0 with 14 out of 19 victories by way of knockout. Here is Alejandro Luis Silva. We now go to referee Shade Murdoch for the instructions for both competitors. Okay, the referee Shade Murdoch, one of the, I think he's just absolutely one of the best refs around. He's about, I think he's the, the tallest ref out there. He's about 6'6". <laughs> six, six. He knows what he's doing in there. You love having him as the third man in the ring. To handle his fight. He's both guys are very big bangers. They're coming to fight. They want to make a name for themselves. And listen, Samir and also uh, um, Silva is really uh, looking good right now. Just from quick appearance of Jerry, Alejandro Silva, who has those silver kind of brocade trunks. I really like them. He's from Argentina. Do you notice anything about him? I, to well, me, I, he looks like he really is. He's already got a little bit of a sweat going on him. And this is something you always talk about. And you notice that Isa Samir did not have that glisten about him. That It looks like he maybe didn't warm up. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's first round is kind of they're, they're figuring each other out. They're trying different things out. And, you, you know, like you said, Silva is sweating a little bit. And now look at these guys are banging very good. Uh, Samir has just tried that hook there right there. Almost just, just missed him. I'm Randy G, the commish, along with former number one heavyweight contender in the world, gentleman Jerry Cooney, in our opening bout here on Boxing Insider Promotions coming from the packed room at Sony Hall in the heart of New York City. You know, I like what Silva's doing. He's banging the body. He's, he's trying to get those hands to come down. Now he's throwing upstairs again, but uh, he's trying to mix it up. Find the way in. Jerry, these guys are knockout hitters. I mean, Silva has 14 knockouts in his 19 wins. And Samir, wild right hand there, he has 16 knockouts in his 19 wins. Obviously, these guys can punch. Uh, they, know, they know the game very well. And they're going to see who's the most determined. And we see, we've seen Silva work his way in. I like what I'm seeing so far from Alejandro Silva, the way he's got his hands up. He is walking in, and everything he's throwing, Jerry, is hard. Bad intentions on those shots. And, you know, I like the fact these guys are only fighting eight rounds. They're... Um, their career, their records say that they should be fighting 10, 12 rounds, but they got an eight round fight today. They'll pick up the power. And down goes Samir. With a nice right hand there. He's going to wait for the last second, or Jerry, is he going to take the count? It's over. Fight's over. Jerry, that was a very impressive. One round knockout. Performance from Alejandro Silva, who has that shot that he landed, and now he's going over with his opponent on the floor, who is looking, his eyes, I just got to look into his eyes, his eyes are basically crossed and glazed. You know, I didn't see him try and get up. You know, most guys are fighting, you try to get up, you get off the ground. We didn't see that. He must get pretty solid, uh, and uh, didn't think he could make it up. Doctors from the New York State Athletic Commission have finally gotten him up. They're having him just walk across the ring. And he hugs Silva. The Jerry, I thought from the opening bell, he was totally outgunned. This yeah. Silva, you could see why the WBC has him rated around number 28 in the world. And I think he's, if this was one of those record magazines with the bullet going straight up, this is a guy with a lot of... Of and, and you know, Randy, you're 100% right, but we didn't see enough uh, of Silva in that first round. Obviously, he kept the pressure on him. He worked the body, tried to set those shots up, and he did. He landed the knockout punch, but I would have liked to see him go a couple, two or three rounds to see what he's made of. But that being said, he looks sensational. So this one is going to go down as a KO, not a, a TKO, because Samir did not beat the count. 
He went down from one hard shot. And Jerry, as I'm looking at Silver, as we are staring at him here on our Boxing Inside cameras, he is put together. He is carved. He is chiseled. I want to see more of this guy. Oh, no doubt. And I, I'm looking in the other corner, and I'm seeing what a good job the New York State Athletic Commission is doing checking this kid out. Um, Samir, Samir, how he's doing is as, as his reflection, reflex coming back. And, you know, he seems like he's doing well. He's standing up. He knows where he is. Uh, he's got legs on shot. So, so, yeah, you know, listen, they're doing a great job. I really like to see what they're doing here. And the, and the winner goes on. Yep. Let's make it official. And we're going to... As soon as our ring announcer has those cards with the time on it, we will make it official. And it's up to Marvelous Matt. We go. I mean, you could see the commission jump right on this kid, right? Oh, yeah. Samir, they really looked him over, watched his eyes, and his reflex. Re you know, how, how did he respond? Jerry, he did a good you know, job. Having been former head of the New York State Athletic Commission, I will tell you that I do think that no commission in the country has the medical staff that they do. Their doctors, all of them, are sharp as can be, and they were with this guy because, if need be, there's always an ambulance outside, right, right in the building, right out front. That if they have to get somebody out of here, he's out of here instantly, and the doctors make that decision. Well, we're seeing the uh, Silva seems very excited. Work on like job. Ladies and gentlemen, in two minutes and 20 seconds of the first round, your winner by way of knockout, Alejandro Luis Silva. There's another victory for Silva. For the undefeated Alejandro Silva, who now ups his record to 20 and 0. He has one draw on that record, but that O stands out as he advances in the middleweight division. We wonder where the WBC, which has him rated at number 28 before this fight started, where they're going to move him to now, and what a year he can look forward to in the new year coming up. And you know, Randy, he's 29. They're going to have to move him. He's going to have to move a little quicker than normal because of the age. In my opinion. Yes, he is 29. But that doesn't necessarily mean they got to rush him at this point. They can take another year, get him another three, four fights, and then really move him up. But I'm super, super impressed with him. Jerry, we're going to stay right around the middleweight division here and that one was basically it wasn't yet middleweight it was one of the super fights on this card it was a super welterweight and super welterweight is right around 154 anything over that is middleweight but these guys were just basically over the mark so they were super welterweight and this one we got middleweight and one of them is the cousin as you said in the opening of Money Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather. It is Kenneth Sims Jr., who actually was offered a contract by Money Mayweather. And he said, hey, cuz, I love you, but this is not the kind of contract I'm looking for. I, I want to see if I could do better. And he has been with a few other promoters. He was with Matchroom, worked through the Matchroom contract. He was with Don King for a short time. And now he is fighting here for Boxing Insider and promoter Larry Goldberg. And I feel that he's making a good move by coming over to Larry Goldberg for this fight. I, I agree. Jerry, 
he is 22 and 1 with 20 of his victories coming by way of knockout. So I am I'm just looking forward to this fight. Packed crowd here tonight at Sony Hall in the heart of New York City. You know, this Kenny Sims had one heck of an amateur career. I believe he had over 200 bouts during as an amateur, winning most of them. Something like 188 of those wins were by 100, I think it was 188 wins, most of them by knockout. We'll see tonight also if he's Randy. the puncher that his professional record says it is. Let's get this one started. He also medaled in the Olympics uh, trials. Right? Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is. here at Holiday Fight Night brought to you by Boxing Insider takes place inside of eight rounds in the middleweight division. About to make his way to the blue corner for this bout, here is Antonio Todd. And Antonio weighed in at yesterday's weigh-in at 159.2. He's 28 years old, stands six feet even. Got a pro record of 14 and six. Eight of those 14 victories have come by way of knockout. He fights out of Atlanta. He was born and raised in Atlanta. And he also won his first five fights as a pro. And you know, most of the fights that he has fought have been in the Atlanta area. It's funny, on his record, he has a victory over a guy named Arsenio Hall. Hall. <laughs> and it was in South Carolina where they have basically no commission whatsoever. So I think somebody came in and just used the name Arsenio Hall. And now, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent approaching the red corner. Here is Anthony Sims. Here comes the cousin of Money Mayweather. He stands fit six feet one. He weighed in yesterday at 158. Point four. 27 years old, actually comes from Plainfield, Indiana. And he now fights out of Los Angeles, California. 22 and 1 with 20 of his fights ending in knockouts. Well, you know, it's a great story about him not going with Floyd Mayweather. You know, maybe it's a personality thing. Maybe he wants to run his own show. Uh, you know, I, I respect him for that. Ladies and gentlemen, this middleweight contest takes place inside of eight rounds. The referee in charge of the action is Sean Clark. Our ringside judges are John McKay, Robert Perez, and Marcel Varela. Introducing first, competing out of the blue corner, from Atlanta, Georgia, standing six feet tall, weighing in at 159.2 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Antonio Primo Todd. Mr. So Todd puts his record of 14 and six with eight knockouts against his opponent competing out of the red corner. His opponent is from Los Angeles, California. Standing six feet, one inch tall, weighing in at 158.4 pounds and entering this bout with a record of 22 and one. 20 of his 22 victories by way of knockout. Here is the magician, Anthony Sims. Now, Anthony Sims looks in great shape. He's a well-conditioned kid. His body is, is warmed up. And uh, I think he's got all the confidence in the world in him right now. Jerry, is this the toughest part of a fight right, for a guy right, John, right before the bell? No punches have like landed. You're wondering about your opponent. Is this Touch where the up. real nerves come in? Well, your, your butterflies are going because you've got a couple of different plans. You've watched them a little bit, and you're waiting for that bell to see which 
uh, which will work for you. And obviously, you start out with the jab and try and find the openings along the way. But we see a lot of life in uh, Mr. Sims over there, 22 and 1 with 20 knockouts. And we'll see how fast Ant Anthony Sims comes flying out of the corner. Constant pressure. You're going to see him. He's very, very athletic. You know, the only time he lost, it was on a very close decision to Romer Alexis Angulo back in January of 2020 in Miami Beach. It was a split decision. Uh, great experience for him in that loss. See, it's just like kind of a feel out round and uh, you know we, we you know it's, we see Todd he's giving me a little bit of Floyd Mayweather you know body shift well he's going to do a lot of he is a guy who does a lot of body rolls got to realize a lot of fighters today absolutely idolize the cousin of Sims Floyd, Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather they idolize him and they copy his style but not everybody can do what Mayweather did no, no, you see how Sims is trying to work his way in. He's working the body. Greatest thing in the world. Drop them, get those hands to come down, and then turn it over, put him to sleep. I mean, uh... Anthony Sims has won his last two fights, but his last fight came back a year ago. He has been out of the ring for one year, so you might see some rust on him. He fought at the Armory in Minneapolis, where he won on a third round stoppage over Matty Woods. Well, I think he's looking very good tonight. I mean, he's getting hit tapping. Hey, listen, Antonio Todd's jab is working very well. But I don't think, I don't think we've really seen Anthony Sims open up at all yet. He's just figuring it out, figuring the guy, getting his distance. We talked about the rush that may be on Anthony Sims, not on Todd, because he hasn't been off for a year. He actually fought three weeks ago, wow. and he won on a sixth-round TKO over Larry Smith in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, I don't see any quitting him, so I think he's coming here to win this fight. He's got a great jab. It's causing some problems for uh, Anthony Sims. And Antonio Todd... Again, he weighed in at 159 and a quarter. Sims, 158 and a half. Jerry, I like some of that defense, that daring defense. Dropping his left hand. Sims is dropping the hand, showing his chin. He landed a couple of stiff jabs there to the chin of Todd. He is, I mean, they're both doing a great job with... Uh, Working it out, seeing who's uh, going to open up first. Good, good first round, Manny. Interesting, very interesting first round. As a matter of fact, I might give that round to Todd. Oh, you think so? Okay. You are our official, unofficial scorer here tonight. Here are the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. There is no saving by the bell in any round, and only the referee or the doctor can stop the fight. I mean, he, these two guys, right, they've gone to get a lot of bouts. They've gone the distance before. They've sparred a lot. These guys are going to start picking up. I think Sims is going to start picking it up right now. Nice body shot by Sims. He's finding his range. See, he's trying to move himself in, see where he can start to lay the punches from.
Antonio Todd, when he just jabbed there, Jerry, did you see he lifted his chin straight up in the air? Listen, and I love Mr. Goldberg's putting on some great fights, some great bouts. This is an interesting one, because I really want to see much more of Anthony Sim. We've been hearing a lot about him, and he's been looking for his arrival, and his time is now. Well, usually you get them to quiet down in the corner, up in the little bit louder the corner. Of, uh, this is a very tough commission with that because if you get too boisterous in the corner, they've got corner inspectors here that the corner is told, keep it down, especially if they start getting, uh, using some pretty salty language. But I mean, it's not allowed. They do that yesterday or the day before they even let the guys in the corner know that, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the last moment, so this is working out to be a little bit of a good fight. They're, they're finding their way in. I like Sims is uh, working the body. And listen, Antonio Todd is uh, 14 and 6, but that doesn't say much as far as we're seeing right now. I like the defense on, on Todd. Not much of an offense. The jab there, he's kind of pushing it out there, not really throwing with bad intentions. He actually did there. Yeah. Nice uh, combination there by uh, Anthony Sims. That nice combination by Sims. Right, right before that, there was a light combination by Todd that kind of kept Sims a little bit oh, off balance. Nice right hand by Antonio Todd. Jerry, that was the first time I think that he really let a punch go. And landed solid in. And listen, Sims took it very well. And Todd taking the fight right now to Sims. Misses with a right hand. There's the bell. End of round number two. This one's scheduled for eight. One of our lovely boxing insider round card girls. There we're looking into the corner of Sims and some action from last round. There we go, looking good. And we see, see Sims connected. And then the right hand of Todd comes in and catches him solid. Did Very you see close Sims saying, Sims is going, come on, come on. Close, <laughs> close rounds. Listen, um, Antonio Todd is coming out of the corner, a pretty confident guy right now. He's in the fight. It's round number three. Nice left hook. These are Sims. middleweights. The man in the white trunks with the red waistband, Antonio Todd, and his opponent is Anthony Sims Jr. out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Sims, 22 and one. Todd, 14 and six. Well, you'd like to see maybe an, an Anthony Sims to start to pick it up. Nice combinations from both these guys. One, two, landed on both of them. Jerry, that, was that a, a block right hand? It was a block. It, it yeah, sounded it was good. It looked good, but uh, he, he caught the shot with his glove. So you wonder if the judges say, Maybe a judge on the other side of the ring didn't see that it was blocked. He said, wow, that's the best shot of the fight. Nice little wide, wide hook there, not too good. See, I see Ant Antonio Todd is, you know, frustrating Anthony Sim right now.
you mean, here's where the world class guys start to take over. They start to pick it up. They start to land combinations, not just one or two shots, but four, five, and six shots. And we haven't seen it yet today from these two guys. So it's still an interesting fight, though. Anthony Sims, a little bit taller, 6 1 to 6. And just has a little bit more of a reach advantage. You saw Todd go behind the back there with a shot like a kidney shot. Sean Clark missed that one. Jerry, I know both you and I, for years, when we talk about guys in close with the rabbit punching, yeah. this commission doesn't tolerate rabbit yeah. punching. Well, it's, it's very dangerous to hit somebody behind the head like that. I think they every should. commission. Mm -hmm. I know Larry Hazard from Jersey does. Jack Reese. If, if he has to say it himself, California, Jack Reese, one of the very best out there. He does it. Cal uh, Nevada does it. Some of the best commissions in the country. Mm -hmm. But there are other ones who let the fighters get away with the mm -hmm. rabbit punch. See, I don't see why they're throwing one or two punches at a time. It's, it's already, uh, you know, we're in the third round. you got to start to pick it up now. It's only an eight-round fight. Here's the time I'll tell you that at this point in the fight, you got to pick it up because it is only eight rounds. Round number three in the books. And I'm going to give you a moment to uh, mark your scorecard, and then we're going to come at you and see how you have it. Round number four coming up. This one is scheduled for eight rounds, and after three... Jerry, how do you have it scored? I have it uh, 29 Anthony Sims and um, 28. 29, 28 for Anthony Sims. So let me peek in over your scorecard. You gave round number one to Todd. I did. And then you gave two and three to Anthony Sims. Yeah, I think he landed more solid shots. A little more busy. He's working his way in. But really... You know, this is time to pick it up now. Fourth round. This is the second fight here on the professional level for new promoter Larry Goldberg, who's making himself quite a name in boxing and certainly around the New York area where everybody is ringing his phone. Hey, you just ran a fight next month, last month. You one now, you got a couple more coming up early in the year. Can I be on your card? Can I be on your card? Fighters love him. Fighters love him. I, I said to Larry, isn't it amazing how fast you become very popular? He's a great guy, too. You know, he's a great guy. His family's here, his father's here, his friends come to support him. So you see, I'm, I'm seeing Sims start to really work on the body. He's throwing some more punches, right. picking it up a little bit. Now, Jerry, and you, you have to. You just saw Sims land a right hand to the small of the back. Yeah. But in that case, when he was going to throw the body shot, Todd actually turned away from him, giving him the back. So that is really, yes, it was a foul blow, but it wasn't intentional right. by any means. Right. Todd brought that on himself. And Sims also just landed a very good left hook on the chin. Well, it's time to pick it up. Let's get to work. You know what I mean? Nice body jab. Whoa, nice right hand by Anton Anthony Sims. That might have been Sims' best right hand of the fight, and Todd took it very well. You know, I was telling the guys, when you hit a guy with a shot, you, you shake him up a little bit. Give yourself 30 seconds. Open up. See what you can do. Uh, maybe you can get him out of there. Listen, Todd can fight. His biggest pro win came last January 22nd when he won a 10-round majority decision over Hugo Centeno Jr., who came into that fight with a 28-3-1 record. Wow. So, I mean, Todd can fight, and you can see it here sometimes. Sometimes he gets a little bit lazy, lays his punches out there, but when he moves those hands in combinations, Sims knows he's in with a very good opponent. Missed those shots. The three good shots. Whoa, nice hook from both of them. Jerry, you know a little something about left hooks. 
that left hook looked like he really didn't have much on it, that he kind of reached out, it was thrown a little bit longer. Had he stepped into it more, got a little bit closer and turned more, it would have been more effective. Yeah, and, and I thought that both of them throw through two hooks, but I think that Sims overall was a better hook. But they're picking up the pace here. So is Todd. And it's funny, you know, we talked about Todd's best win against a guy who was 28-3-1. His very last fight came wow. a couple weeks ago against a guy who was 13-51. and 51. So, I mean, he's not against fighting anybody. He just wants an opponent in there. He doesn't care if they're 13-15-1 or 28-3. Well, yeah, and he's, they're probably trying to keep him busy. Larry Smith was 13, 51, and 2. He should make your, uh, <laughs> your, your uh, what do you call it, loser of the month. <laughs> yeah, Randy and I are on Sirius XM, channel 156, every Monday, every Friday from 12 to 2 p.m. And we put on a great show. We talk all about the fights and uh, the great um, shows we've been having and are going to have yep. following for, for 2023. I'll throw it again every Monday, every Friday on Sirius XM, channel 156 from noon until 2 p.m. Eastern Time at the fights with me, Randy G, the commission, gentlemen, Jerry Cooney. And we are moving. We're past the midpoint of this fight. Jerry, just watching this fight now, do you think we're going to get eight rounds out of it, a full eight rounds? Or do you think there's going to be a sudden stoppage somewhere? I, I mean, listen, right now these two guys are very evenly matched, e even though the records doesn't show that. But, uh, you know, who wants it more? Who's going to put the extra effort in? That's a nice jab from uh, Sims. And an over, overhand right there. Jerry, this is quite a cozy room for boxing. I mean, they hold somewhere seven, 750, 800 people. I do not see a vacant space in this room. No. no. Big fans come support the game. And, uh, and the fights, listen, the first two fights so far have been great fights compared to, uh, and, you know, we're going to see some really good fights later and on. We're going to see... Uh, Andy Dominguez, I love to see that kid fight. What One a bunch of, of the fans. prospects of the year. Nice right hand by Sims. Then he had to get away from a couple of jabs. Todd is starting to really pick it up with that jab. He's throwing it more, not landing it a lot, but he's throwing it. And when he does throw it, Sims stays on defense. There he moved away, so a little bit of a, a, a shoulder roll. And remember, he is a cousin of Money Mayweather. You know, I see him. He's landing one good shot. He's not following through. One of those shots was... There he comes a, now. He's coming on. Got three right hands, four right hands by Sims. Trying to really make a brawl out of it now. I think he heard me. A couple of nice body shots in there. Sean Clark breaks him up. Nice right hand by Sims. He's putting the pressure on him. Another right hand. Todd is not an inside Whoa, nice fighter. left hook from Sims. Todd is hurt right now. And there's 45 seconds remaining in this round, round number five. That was, uh, could have been behind the head from uh, Sims. Nice combo. Sims doing his best to work his way in. 30 seconds to go in this round. This is scheduled for eights. Anthony Sims Jr. against Antonio Todd. These guys are middleweights. And it looks to me that Antonio Todd is starting to slow down a little bit. Oh, see, right there, I think that was a, to me, that looked like a rabbit punch. Mm -hmm. I agree. See, I've heard a lot of referees in the dressing room over the years, and I, I like this. And you fans have all heard when the referee, and take a look. That was a nice You just good saw hook. that chop. Nice right that hand. A, that was good. That was a good hook. He got hurt there a little bit. 
and listen, that's why Antonio Todd, his record is 14 and six. Maybe he tires down the stretch, and uh, whereas you know Anthony Sims is really serious about his career. We don't know yet. Right. Now you fans have heard in the center of the ring when the referee first brings the fighters together. He says, "I gave you guys the instructions in the dressing room." I like the trunks over here. I like them over here. Are there any questions? And you could ask a question if you want. But what they do in the dressing room, they go over every single oh, yeah. rule of them. And I have heard, and I do like this. They say, gentlemen, I am not going to tell you. This is your first, second, and third warning right here. No rabbit punching. Man, it, you know, we, we had the pleasure of being with uh, referee uh, Jack Reese. And he took us behind the dressing rooms. And yes. We saw everything that went on. It was a great time. And, of course, in all my years as commissioner of New York and you as top heavyweight contender, you know what went on with the referees coming back and saying, hello, Mr. Cooney, I'm going to be your referee tonight. And they go over every single thing that could possibly happen, the clinching of, and stopping when the referee says stop. Well, you know, you make me feel bad because you were so hard on me all those years. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and, listen, we see Sims really picking it up. He's moving his feet. He's, feels excited the other kids slowing down backing up this is round number six scheduled for eight we got two minutes to go here in round number six you have a little problem with sims knee he keeps touching his knee i don't know what that's about and keep in mind we still have an eight round bantamweight matchup between a female by the name of sulem urbina very talented young lady, very personable. And we're going to hope to get her over here after her fight, win, lose, or draw. And she's going up against a young lady who's five and six out of New Orleans, Louisiana. And, Jerry, there are good fighters with bad records and bad fighters with good records. And is Smith is one of those people, a good fighter with a bad record. And sometimes you lose split split. Uh, Split second, you know, decisions that right. you really were in the fight the whole time. Now, her, her story is, and we'll get to this in a little while when those females come up, but she is much better than her five and six record. Now, I think you're going to see it when she is in there in just a little while with Sulem Urbina. You can also see when these guys come in as the opponent, it's a tough job they got to work through and, and take control. It feels to me that uh, Antonio Todd is kind of getting broken down by uh, Sims, and Anthony Sims. Looks to me like Sims is doing everything he can to land that right hand and get Todd out of there, but Todd is hanging in there. I like that jab right now. Body jab, head jab. But he's by not Todd. really landing really well. He's trying to keep him away. He's trying to get in there, but Sims has really got his number. Nice right hand there again. Behind the head again. He's pulling his claim is was behind the head. Yeah, so Good there man. we go. End of round number six. We got two more. We got six more minutes to go. Will it go the distance? Round number seven coming up. Boxing Insider Promotion. This is their second pro fight here at Sony Hall. And promoter Larry Goldberg and his staff have done just an amazing job. And you see the referee is giving him a talk. It could be from those punches behind the head. Referee Sean Clark, yes, was in there. And he was motioning to the back of the head. And yes, he saw that. It's round number seven, scheduled for eight. These guys are middleweights. Anthony Sims, 22 and one against Antonio Todd. Nice left hook. 14 and six, eight knockouts. Sims is throwing some good bombs right now. Defense is good. 
Nice right hand to the body. You know, Jerry, it, it's funny. Our statistician who does such a great job helping us out with all these stats and everything, what are the stats he sent me on uh, Antonio Todd? And I had to watch it on YouTube, some of his fights. And our statistician, Charles J., wrote, Todd paused a bit with the jab, but he's, he's calm, cool, and patient. And everything that Charles J. told us here, we see it. He paused with the jab sometimes, and sometimes he lets it go. Yeah, but you see also, he doesn't, he, he's, not, he's, he's not letting the gun go. He's, he's waiting, he's patient, and that, I would say, is lack of training, really, uh, takes that, because he's in the fight, and I think he's just getting tired, and uh, obviously, uh, Anthony Sims, he's picking up the pressure. Nice five-punch combination here from Sims. We're on the midpoint of round number seven. This one's scheduled for eight. They're all scheduled for eight rounds tonight. No tens tonight, no fours, no sixes, no twelves, hey, all eights. Mr. Goldberg is moving up the ladder. He's getting some good fighters in here, and I'm sure he's going to have uh, opportunities to help them to grow. It kind of hurt my feelings, because I think he thinks that we don't remember the eights and the tens and the twelves and the sixes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to make everything eight rounds tonight. <laughs> Under one minute to go, round number seven. Good job. Kenny Smith, uh, Kenny Sims in the white trunks with the black band, and Antonio Todd, white trunks, red band. That would be Maroon. I got just a shutout here for. Uh, Anthony Sims so far. Seven rounds in the books. So, Jerry, is it a runaway on your scorecard? I, I got it. I got it. He, Anthony Sims okay, every round. lost the first round. He's won every round since. So, we shall see if Jerry Cooney is going to be strength. right with those judges. Well, I mean, obviously, they could call one or two rounds for Todd, but I didn't see that he did enough. You know, Sims has quite a story. He was born in Plainfield, Indiana. And he grew up with his family in the Indianapolis area. And his father, Jerry, died when he was six years old. And it really hit him very hard. And he went through a long period of emotional distress until some relatives got him into the local boxing gym where he was able to work out a lot of that stress. Frustration, that's, yeah, that loss. Okay, they're right there. Sims is picking it up again. Final round. Nice right hand. Sims doesn't want this going to a decision. Well, or at least he wants to win the last round, make sure. Nice combination. He's throwing a lot more punches. The only loss on Sims' record, and right there, Sean Clark telling him, come on. Watch the rough stuff, guys. Headbutt. He, uh, Todd was was butted, and he's got a, he's bleeding out of his uh, left eye. Nice right hand by Sims again. You could never know exactly how the judges are scoring it, and that happened in his only loss back in January of 2020 when Sims lost a split decision and I mentioned this earlier to the veteran Romare Alexis Angulo in Miami. It's that he just didn't throw enough punches. He was a little bit too 
defensive. Tonight, can't say that he hasn't thrown punches. And on your scorecard, Jerry, he's way in the lead. He is. And he's got uh, Antonio Todd is cut over that left eye. And uh, that just makes Anthony Sims feel a little stronger and want to try and keep landing that shot on him to get him to quit. Nice combination. Knockout. Wow. Nice right hand left hook by Sims. Sims looking for that right hand. Every time he's in close, right like that. He takes pop shots with it. Dead shot behind the head. I don't like that. Nice hook, nice right hand. By Sims. He's pulling away. Five seconds remaining in the fight. Nice right hand by Todd. A little too late, much too late. to uh, Todd, he's trying right to the end. All right. Right up to the end. And the three judges mark their scorecards, make it to four judges. The three who count here, John McKay, Robert Perez, and who else we got in there? We got Marcel Varela. They're marking their scorecard, as is our own judge here on Boxing Insider Promotions. Gentlemen, Jerry Cooney. Jerry, on my unofficial card, I got a 79-73. I got 74. 79. 74. No, 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 let me see. No, no I got much bigger. Look at that. Right. I got uh, 79 for Sims, and I got 9. Who do you Okay. Nine. There we go. Well, we do know, we do believe anyway, that Sims has won seven of the rounds in this fight. Maybe he lost the first round in a more or less feeling out first round. But after that, he began picking it up, did his best for a knockout victory. Couldn't get it over the very slick not going to say very talented, but yes, very slick. Antonio Todd. So let's see if Anthony Sims will win his 23rd fight tonight, which I think he will. And if Antonio Todd will lose for the seventh time. And Sims walks across the ring and has some words with Todd. They shake each other's hand and hug each other. Real sportsmanship there. Tough way to make a living for Antonio Todd. Great job, great fights. That guy's a real jerk. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight grueling rounds, we go to the ringside judges' scorecards. Judge Robert Perez scores this bout 79-73, and Judges John McKay and Marcel Varela score the bout 80-72 to right? in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. The Magician, Anthony Sims! No surprise there. Basically won every round of the fight. Anthony Sims ups his record to 23-1. and 
He did not get his 21st knockout. But you know what, Jerry? I really think this victory, this decision victory, did a lot for him. Sometimes yeah. these guys need the rounds to shake off the rust. And you know, also, you, the, the higher up you up the ladder, the better you perform a lot of times. You have to see what happens with, uh, with Mr. Sims. And uh, I'm sure he's going to be brought back here again. What is the next battle we got coming up? So, two fights are in the books here at Sony Hall for Boxing Insider Promotions. And we still have some excellent matchups to bring to you. We've got the ladies getting ready to walk to the ring. And Jerry, this young lady, who's the, if you want to say the A side here, her name is Sulem Urbina, out of Phoenix, Arizona, is 13-2-1 with two knockouts, just absolutely loaded with personality. And I think we may be getting Anthony Sims to come down to us. You know what? Sure. Anthony, Anthony Sims behind us here. You're going to be back here, right? Yeah. Did you want to interview him? No? Great job. Great job. Nice Anthony Sims stopped off to say hello to Jerry Cooney and myself. Wow. And we got several more bouts, but we got the females you know it's funny when those guys when those guys come over to us it's like we want to just interview everybody in the room and they got to get a piece of jerry cooney he ran over him and uh, you know he made like he wanted to say hello to me but they all want jerry cooney and jerry cooney and randy g want the next fight so let's go up to our ring announcer marvelous matt Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest of the evening takes place in the junior bantamweight division inside of eight rounds. At this time, about to make her way to the blue corner, here is India Smith. Into the ring comes India Smith, who, Jerry, I swear, and we said this in the opening, there are good fighters with bad records and bad fighters with good records, and we've seen so much of that. But basically, we see a lot of bad fighters with good records, puffed up records. There's nothing puffed up about it. She's a good fighter with a bad record, and I think you're gonna see what I mean. And now, ladies and gentlemen, her opponent, Making her way to I feel the like red I've seen her before. This time. She's got Here a lot of that, lot of energy. Of action. Jerry, this young lady is out of. She was born and raised in Mexico, and she has basically a story that you could make a movie out of. Um, just so, so tough. Ladies and gentlemen, the following junior bantamweight contest takes place inside of eight rounds. The referee in charge of the action is Shade Murdoch. John Basile, Anthony Lundy, and Robert Perez are the ringside judges. Introducing first, competing out of the blue corner, from Dallas, Texas, 
standing five feet tall and weighing in at 113.4 pounds, a veteran of 11 fights with a knockout victory to her name, ladies and gentlemen, India Smith! And her opponent, competing out of the red corner, from Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico, now residing in Phoenix, Arizona. She enters this contest with a record of 13, 2, and 1. She stands 5 feet 2 inches tall, weighing it at 114.8 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Sulem Urbina! We now go to referee Shade Barda with the instructions for both competitors. I don't know. I don't think so. Well, the, well, let, well listen, they went right to work. <laughs> the first 30 seconds, we have some fight, fight going on here between these two young ladies. Uh, they both are bringing it, and they're not waiting to warm up. They're already warmed up. They're just punching. Very exciting. Well, I'll tell you, the blue corner, her, her record may not be great, but she's a great fighter. Don't go by that record because she's mm -hmm. here to fight. I've seen she, her. She can fight, mm -hmm. and she's, she had some tough losses that maybe not should have not been losses. She's strong, she got power in both hands, and she's aggressive. Well, you know, you get a, an opponent come in, and they look at her, well, look at her record, I'm gonna really destroy this girl, and look at her, she's having her hands full. Right. And that's a really nice, uh, um, I'm happy to see that for her. Neither one of them are known as punchers. India Smith is five, six, and two with one knockout. And Urbino, who's 13, two, and one, has but two knockouts. I have a feeling we're going to see eight rounds of action here, and I'm telling you, action. I think Ur Urbina throws a lot of good combinations. She's got good technique, and uh, whereas, you know, Smith is just in, in your face. She's, she's coming. She, she's like a bar, bar, bar fighter <laughs> coming <laughs> forward, ready to fight. Listen, I loved watching you fight. Oh, thank you. All those, I always thought, where were you? What happened? Where? And, and look at we find There's no here. opponents in the heavyweights. That's why. Wow. Nice combination. Yes. Nice right combination there, buddy. Remember, these are two-minute rounds. Scheduled for eight. Each round is two minutes. Should be three-minute rounds. That, I'm glad we got you here because Jerry and I talk about this all the time. And every time we have a female on our Sirius XM show, like Sinisa Estrada, Clarissa Shields, and all the rest of them, they all agree with that. Tell us why you think female bounce, and I, I agree with it too. Well, I'll be three minutes. Sure, two reasons. One, I fought in California, and I fought three minute rounds. It was a mistake by the commission, but it was the best mistake that could have happened. I lost the fight to a champion, Martha Salazar, who had fought Vonda Ward and, and a bunch of them. Right. But I fought three minute rounds and it made a big difference in, in the fight because I feel like the last minute of the round is where you really show, are you training, are you in shape? Can you take these punches for this last minute? Okay, so now I understand that, but for women coming in, I like the two minute round because it made them fight at a faster pace. Now they're catching up with the talent pool. Listen, we had the fight main event in the garden with Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. WBC so they're catching won't up. allow it. No. WB said no way. Mauricio said no way. And everybody follows his lead. Yeah, so. we wait. Let's I know. wait. Boxing takes a while. Yeah. But Especially for the women. <laughs> and Sonia, you know, I, I could be very <laughs> um, insistent, and I am not going to stop because there's a lot of people like yourself, like Sinise Estrada, like Clarissa Shields, who want three-minute rounds. And I think if we just stay all over Mauricio, I don't want to hear that wow. doctors have said it's safer because they haven't done enough of a well, study to show that. What, what they're saying is a woman's skull is thinner than a man's skull. 
and that's why th- you've this never is met my wife. <laughs> they hard headed. Right? Well, listen, I wanted to tell you guys I really appreciate your commentary, but there's a great fight going on right now, and yes. uh, Miss Smith is really uh, putting the pressure on. And listen, we do know Arena is a very talented, technical fighter, so it makes for a great fight. She comes from a very tough background. Look, she lost a brother who was shot. She, wow. There was nothing easy for her. And she, she comes from Sonora, Mexico, which very, very tough, rough area. Wow. And there goes Smith with great counter punches. Not one, but four and five. You got to love it. I'd like to see Smith shorten her stance a little mm-hmm. bit. I feel like she's too wide and she can't get that power. Mm-hmm. You know, so she's got to bring her back foot forward. I her. always tell the people that no one listens. They spread their feet so wide, they're yeah. stuck in You lose concrete. the power. Yeah, and you also get stuck. And she's not sitting down. She's lifting her back foot right. up, which is taking it away, too. 20 seconds remaining in round number two. I love I love to hear that stuff, bro. I feel the same way for, for both men and women. And this has been a, you know, knockdown fight for these first two rounds. I mean, you guys were a little busy talking about the two or three minute rounds while I was watching. <laughs> Mark your scorecard, big boy. Jerry is, is our unofficial, official, unofficial, official, unofficial. The new Harold Letterman of boxing. One of the toughest. Bring announces in the game. He's in the building tonight. He's going on tonight. Referee. Sade Murdoch looking over into the corner. Yeah, I had the privilege of having him in the ring with me. My first fight in the Bronx outside. Amateur. He, he was, has turned into one of the very best. Yeah, he's doing, he's, he's really done well. You know, Sonia, I don't understand these corners. They give him like three drips of water. Pour the water in the mouth. I know. <laughs> Round number three coming up. It's a great, he's a great card. Scheduled for eight. Listen, this is a great card. Larry Goldberg, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Boxing Insider in the building. And the last time that we were here, he also had a female on, a female main event. Heather Hardy launched her comeback and won. You know, the referee's doing a great job. He's kicking the guys out of the corner. They're supposed to be out soon, huh? Yeah. There's some size disparity in there, not between the fighters, because Smith is five feet even. Hopefully he doesn't hit the uh, spin and, ball in the yeah, top. Yeah, Urbina is 5'2". The referee is 6'6". Six, six. See, she's, she's, she's working and then she gets out. Stay in there. Right. Don't, don't never back up. Stay inside the pocket. Well, stay in there or step right and get yeah. out. Don't, don't pull right out. Right. We got to talk, you and I. Uh, we got a lot of good language. Connection there, girl. <laughs> it's that heavyweight thing. Nice. At ringside, bringing you all the action from Sony Hall. The commission, Randy G. Nice combination there. Gentlemen, Jerry Cooney and Sonia Lamanakis. Uh-oh. Tripped over the referee's foot there. Urbina's now boxing on, on the... While backing up now, she's not going forward as much, so she right. might have felt a few of those combinations in wow. the beginning. Yeah. Well, she's landed pretty well this round. I have her head right now in this round. Wow, nice body shot. Look at that body shot by that was a good Smith. One. Wow. Look at that little. Yeah, she's trying to entice her. Nice combination again by Urbina. Put another round in the books right after this. Good combination. Excellent. Big action. Ending that round. There may be a swelling around the left eye. We've got to get a look at it. Urbina. Not sure there. Round number four coming up. So, Jerry, what does your scorecard look like? My scorecard is 29 Urbina. And close close matchup. Okay. It's uh, 28. It's close. Would you, it's, what close. Would you... it's close. 29, 28. For Urbina. Out of, she fights out of Phoenix, Arizona. 
32 years old. And she goes up against it. India Smith. Uh, you gotta love India Smith. You gotta love her. You really do. She fights out of Dallas, Texas, but she is originally got her start in New Orleans, Louisiana. Here we go. Round number four. Remember, two-minute rounds. Wow. They're both busy for the first 30 seconds, and then they start moving around. So well, let's see what happens. Also, her being here, her face is so red. Is that from being touched? So much by Smith. These guys. She's winning the round so far, Smith is. Are technically super flyweight, just over the 112 pound limit. India Smith, 113.4. Nice body shot by Urbina. Urbina, 114.8. Got to work in that pocket. The shorter fighter should be going forward. You know, it's really funny, but what you're here with us today, Sonia. And once you punch, you always punch. I love punches. You know what I mean? I, I seem to favor them somewhat. You? Nice combination by uh, Rubina right there. Oh, there's a cut. There's a cut there on Rubina's Rubina, very right popular cheek. in social media. She loves getting on social wow, media and just nice talking about her career. Oh, and she also does modeling. She's going to have to take off a little bit from modeling if that cut is very big. Wow. It's a great, great round. Great round. she got to keep going forward. I'd love to see a faint from one of them. Yeah. You know, a little, a little more. Did technique. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Final 15 seconds of round number four. This one's scheduled for eight. And you know, I almost feel like they have so much to prove that they just want to fight. I think we think about the two minutes also. Mm -hmm. Got to get those punches in, punches in. Nice, nice round. Close fight. Half the fight in the books. Jerry's going to mark his scorecard. And I'm going to throw another question at Sonia Lamanakis. The referee, Sade Murdoch, just came over to us and said, and, and I like that, that the referee came over and told the announcers, we don't have to guess. I didn't see a punch, and all of a sudden I saw blood. It was a headbutt, headbutt said the referee. So that's how it's ruled, is a headbutt. Which means if the fight cannot continue, half the fight is in the books. Right. It will be a technical decision if it cannot continue. You know, it's funny when you get cut, and they're putting, pushing the ice down, and they're pushing the medicine. <laughs> Leave me alone. Let me just fight. I know. <laughs> Give me a little water. I'm good to go. <laughs> Two incredible fighters on either side of me. Sonia Lamanakis. I got the fight even right now, guys. Gentleman Jerry oh, yeah? Cooney. Nice double jab there from Rubina. Nice right hand by Smith. What a, she heard her there. I think she rocked her a little bit. Rubina got rocked there. I feel like Smith's got a lot in the tank, so I'd like to see her putting on the pressure for yeah. the next. The nice thing combination. Is she can steal look the fight her. from her. Wow, look at these punches. Wow. She does come diving in, yeah. Smith. And I feel like she smells the blood, so she's going yeah. forward. Urbina definitely has to watch the head of Smith as she comes in. Nice combination by Urbina. Right hand, left hook was fantastic. Okay, so Jerry, this could be very important. On the scorecard, you've given Urbina, I think, three Two. Of the four completed rounds, right? Two. It's tied up right now. Oh, it's tied on your card. Wow. And this is a very close round as well. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, uh, Smith is really ahead a little bit in this round so far. Nice right. Look at that Good right hand. Love a left hook right after that, that's, though. Bing, bing. That's what I'm to Keep the elbow down, Dick. Keep the elbow. <laughs> nice defense by Smith. Nice right hand. She tried the uppercut with the left hand. Oh, this is a tough fight. You 
You know, man, it's just like you said, this, the, the, the five and six record has nothing to do with this right. kid. And being that Ms. Lemonock is Another right hand, opening. another right hand. Listen, I'm giving this round to Smith. Yeah, I'll give this round to Smith, too. She did good. She landed a lot of clean punches. She did. You know, she's throwing three to her one, and that's, that's what's making the difference. Yeah, Fantastic. in our opening tonight, Jerry and I were talking about good fighters with bad records and bad fighters with good records. Right. And we've seen more than our share of fighters with 25-0 and 0 records who come on. Give me a break. They bought a ball in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, and you know what? Then you see somebody like Miss Smith with a 5-6-1 and one record. If you look at the record, she's nothing but an opponent. We're watching her tonight, and we said she's one of those good fighters with a bad record, and you see why we said that. Well, remember, not everybody has the opportunity to get signed with a Ludabella or somebody, or Matchroom, or, you know, and you take what you can get because you want to fight. You know, it's that hunger. Well, this is interesting. Uh, this is an interesting card because, you know, this, this bout, Ludabella is, is handling Marina over there. Well, so, yeah, he signed Sula Marina. Nice, come throwing some punches. In Smith's very last fight, she was on a three-fight winning streak, and she had that streak broken, losing an eight-round decision. She's to, landed some great right hands. Yeah. She has. She lost to a young lady by the name of Makaya Kreps in a fight that took place just a few doors down at the Edison Hotel here in New York. Yeah, she, she's a decorated amateur. Makaya, she, she, she can fight. She's I, also with Lou Bella. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, Urbina needs to pick it up here. Yeah. She's falling behind. Yeah. I, th I think the pressure is a lot for her. Wow, what a combination from Smith again. Yeah, Smith is that nonstop pressure going forward. That's how you steal the fight if you're the opponent. In the and the defense corner. is pretty good, too. Yeah. Nice right here. Look at that. Look at that count weave underneath yeah. there. Well, everybody, I think you see why we said this was going to be an exciting fight because Randy. that young lady with the five and six record india smith certainly does not fight like she's five and six Randy, if you're making a comeback i'm putting you in there with india smith <laughs> don't do that I see how you like me <laughs> don't do that to him what a great card i'm, I'm so excited uh, Mr. Goldberg, I mean, it's really exciting. He's putting on good, good cards, filling the house up because of that. Yeah, definitely. Oh, no, 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 slip. no, slip. Yeah, and that was a good call. Yeah. That was a good call. I think that they stepped on each other's feet. Nice body shot by Smith again. Nice right hand by Smith. Wow, again. Another round comes to an end. I, I, I think round. I gotta give that one to Smith again. Another good so round for India Smith, who could be pulling off quite an upset here tonight. Listen, Tanya, stop trying to change my uh, my judging over here, okay? Never. And tell all your friends if you're watching this, you're watching on. Sonia, look, take a look over. Look at that shot there. <laughs> You're watching on Boxing Insider's Facebook page. You're watching on Boxing Insider on YouTube. Call all your friends. This is not a, a $49.99 buy. This no. is not a $29.99 buy. This is not a $1.99. This is a holiday present from Larry Goldberg a freebie. to you guys. Free. A freebie. <laughs> now listen, this is only the seventh round? Yes. This fight is flying. Yes. Let's go, girl. Remember, these are two-minute rounds. This is round number seven, scheduled for eight. You know, the fight's got to be good when you're not looking at the, uh, the ring card, girl. It's my friend. <laughs> India Smith. Nice combination. In the green trunks, coming out bombing against Salim Urbina. Salim Urbina needs to fight the whole round. It's about a minute and a half left. You got to fight. You got to fight hard. This is a, a, you know, 
Well, she's on the move, so I don't think she likes the hands right. of Smith. You know, I feel like she's felt a little bit of that power, and Smith. You okay, know, question from both of you. Sonia should Urbina be staying on the outside because I think she's getting torn up on the inside. No, she wants to fight. She needs to fight. Is your name Sonia? Well, she just told us that. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like she's behind, so she sh should be going forward to put the pressure, but, you know, I feel like she's, she's bleeding. She's worried about the cut, so she's trying to cover it up. That was a good check hook right there. Under a minute to go, and Jerry, what do you think? Should she be on the outside? No, I, I think that she has to pick her shot, but she needs to work the body. She hasn't done that all night, and she needs to slow, slow uh, Smith down, and she hasn't been able to. Smith does not get tired. Well, I don't it, even, wow. See, and for me, I don't think Urbina should even be thinking about the body. I think she should be on the outside. Just it's too late. Right? Pecking she's too, the drift. Forget the body. Behind. Thank you. Brother. So far behind. That was a nice right hand by The body shots Urbina. are not going to score anything for her. She's got to get on the outside. She's and I'm talking about Urbina. The, listen, she has to open up the upstairs by the body shots. I think it's too late for that. It's the last round. She's got to fight. No, I think we got one more. One oh, more, one, more, one more. This is not the last. And they slap each other a five at the end Great of fight. round number seven. We got two more minutes of this. And this thing is getting better and better every single round. They should have ice on the. They should have ice on that eye. I don't know why they don't. Urbina once fought for the WBA Flyweight Championship in July of 2021. And in that one, she lost a 10-round majority decision to Japan's Naoko Fujioka. And I believe she's in the building. Well, she, Lou, Lou, just, Lou just signed her. I she's training heard. with me at Gleason's. She's in. She's my stablemate now. So, I, what you, so what do you mean thinking? You think? Wow. I think she's in the building. I think that's her. <laughs> Lou DiBella, who has done so much for female boxing, just keep finding some of the very best, most exciting females in the world. And out comes Smith. Yeah, she wow, wants, what a shot. she's hungry, she wants this victory. She's wow. gonna fight. She's landing solid shots. In the body and the head. I wonder, Jerry, if your scorecard yes. is gonna be indicative of how the three judges are gonna look at it I think Urbina ran into the wrong Smith tonight. She's fighting back. She's trying. She's trying, but... Much too late, right? Diablo's right. She doesn't want to fight anymore. The judges here tonight. Robert Perez, Tony Lundy, and John Basile are the men who are going to make the difference in another minute. Another right hand, another right hand. You see the blood? Work right there, they the got to right, work. Yep, the on inside, the right side right. of Rabina's cheek. That was caused by a butt, I believe it was in round four. Eight ounce gloves on the girl, eight ounce? Uh, ten ounce. Sonia, I know you haven't been scoring here, so it might be unfair to ask you but who do you think is winning, but I I, I got Smith up by two rounds. Rubina <laughs> just looked outside you and nodded like no I can't do it. Much like our colder did in the Okay, Jerry, mark your scorecard. Terrific fight, terrific job by the referee, Sade Murdoch. The crowd here, the standing room crowd at Sony Hall in New York City loved it. I think she, she 
I think Smith shocked Sula Marbina. I don't think that she expected that. She got it. I have seen way too many fights in my long career with somebody with a losing record who I knew was a good fighter. And this was one which, again, we said in the opening tonight. Whether she wins or loses, Smith is a good fighter with a bad record. Is she going to be able to even that record up? She's five and six. Will it be six and six? Will it be five and seven? And certainly if it's a loss for Urbina, it is a loss that hurts. Because they were looking at some big stuff for her, and this is a, a big step backwards if she lost. How about rematch? Can you say rematch? Eh. And Smith walks to the center of the ring in a place where she knows nobody. Nobody knew her before this. And she has made countless fans watching tonight. Well, remember, she just fought in New York on DeBella's card against Michaela. Right. So maybe she, some of us that were there are here. What a fight. Let's find out who won. Jerry, who do you? 74 to 78 in my, in my, in my score. OK, let's see how the judges have it. I think Urbina knows she lost. I wonder what Smith is thinking right now. She's thinking, Marvelous I hope the Matt judges give it to me. Is going to tell us, let's listen. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight hellacious rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Robert Perez scores this foul, 77 to 75. Judges Anthony Lundy and John Basile scored about 79 to 73 in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision, India Smith! They had it a little wider than us, but I still think that India won. That, that was a wide one. Two judges had it 79-73. One judge had it 77-75. But I don't think there's any surprise there because the young lady from New Orleans, Louisiana, who came in with the record of five and six. Again, the one we said, good fighter with a bad record. She won, she upped her record to six, six, and one. She is one happy little lady tonight. And as we said, Salim Ravina, she's gotta be disappointed, but what a fight she fought. And you know, look, in the end, she fought in New York. Maybe she knew she had to really bring her A game and hustle to win that fight. And that's what she did tonight. So she earned it. All respect to her. Yes, and congratulations. Now uh, let's hope she gets a nice shot somewhere. Gets a good time. Well, it, Lou, Lou, I'm sure Lou will give her something good. And there you see promoter Lou DeBello talking to that amazing little lady. India Smith, who lives in the Dallas, Texas area, but really is known. She comes from New Orleans, has family there. She is one pump winner tonight. Not used to coming into somebody's backyard and winning the fight. She was also an amateur with USA Boxing, and I feel like that pedigree makes a difference because I don't know if she even had an amateur career. You know, so I feel like that make, makes a big difference in your career when you get into the pros. Yeah. Wow, so it was upset city it in was. that one. Sonia, it has been a pleasure as Thank always. You guys. Appreciate it. Jerry school, and I. School wanted... tomorrow, so I got to go home. I got the mathematics class in the morning. It's seventh grade math. And I'm there we go. Day off. School teacher, Sonia Lamanaka. I can't, the day before vacation. Champion. Merry Christmas, Happy New Likewise, Year. Likewise, same to you. We'll talk soon, okay? What a friend to boxing this lady is. Thank you, Sonia.
Ladies and gentlemen, Holiday Fight Night brought to you by Boxing Insider continues with the following contest scheduled for eight rounds in the light heavyweight division. About to make his way to the blue corner at this time, ladies and gentlemen, here is De Carlo Perez. Get that out of here. I got a question for you. What do you think of all the fights? And, and, uh, the and now, and ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, his opponent making his way to the he red corner. Here is Nadim Salum. <laughs> And we got a, another bat here. I wound up, because you know that I'm certainly not shy and I Ladies love to talk. Ladies and gentlemen, this lightweight division contest is scheduled to take place inside of eight rounds. Sean Clark is the referee in charge of the action. It's going to be a great Lundy, fight right here, another good Marcel one. Marcel Varela are our ringside judges. Perez is 19 and 6 first. with six knockouts, Boxing not much of a puncher. Corner from Egg Harbor, New Jersey, and standing five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 169.4 pounds, entering this bout with a record of 19, six and one, with six of his 19 victories by way of knockout. Here is De Carlo and the Diablo Perez. And his opponent competing out of the red corner. From Lebanon, now residing in Brooklyn, New York. Standing in at six feet, one inches tall. Weighing in at 170.2 pounds. Entering this bout with a record of nine and one with four of his nine victories by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, Nadine, the unpredictable salute. We now go to referee Sean Clark Salud. for the instructions of both competitors. Maybe he is. He was born and raised in Lebanon. He lives in Brooklyn, New York. He's 29 years old, stands six feet one inch tall. Weighed in at yesterday's weighing at 170.2 pounds. He is managed by Adam Glenn, the son of the legendary trainer in New York, Jimmy Glenn. And to Carla Perez, stands 5'10", he weighs 169.4. He's 31 years old with a 19-6-1 record, 6 by way of knockout. He basically comes from Atlantic City, yeah. now makes his home in Egg Harbor, New Jersey, not far from Atlantic City. I know it well. A lot of great golf there. Now, Jerry, the last time we saw Saloon, and he's a little bit, he's hes called unpredictable. That's his nickname. And he's got a very odd kind of style. He'll paw a little bit. He, he looks sometimes almost uncoordinated. And then he'll throw a hard shot just like he did there. Yeah, I think he's got a good ability. He's got a lot of guts, a lot of fans in here tonight. And we're going to see those fans turn him alive.
and now we're seeing him with a guy 19, six, only six knockouts, so not big a puncher. The only loss on the record of Saloon was a decision, a majority decision to a Hey, a nice hook. A nice, nice hook by Perez right there. Another one. See, he's working that right hand to the body, turn the hook over the top, and he's catching him. And that loss I was talking about, we were at ringside calling that fight to the Fonwa King out on Long Island. Yes, we were. Salome is a very smart guy. He's just figuring out this kid. He's in there with his toe. It's durable. Perez is not a walkover. 19 wins. It'll be interesting to see when Saloon goes back to the corner, what kind of corner he has. Does he lower the right hand, aim for the chest? There's a nice little uppercut right there. Right hand uppercut by Saloon. This one's scheduled for eight rounds. Every fight on this card has been scheduled for eight nice rounds. Nice three punch combination by Saloon. Our official, unofficial, official, unofficial score is gentleman Jerry Cooney doing a great job. Jerry, you ever think about becoming no. a judge? No. <laughs> no, he never thinks about it. All right, nice, nice, nice round. You know, listen, this, this is an amazing statistic, but the Carlo Perez has fought an incredible amount of 142 rounds as a pro. And Saloon has fought just 46 rounds as a pro. 142 to 46. That's 100 more rounds. And he had a great win against a guy that was 23 and 0, Juan Cabrera. That was a tough, tough round to, to judge, to score. I like them when they're tough. It gets to show us just what a great judge you are. The Carlo Perez, 19 and six, with one draw, six knockouts, 31 years old. And the 29-year-old Saloon, and Saloon in the white trunks with the red stripes. I like him, he's, he's fainting a lot, he's using that jab. He's not getting caught in the firefight. With Perez. De Carlo has been around. He turned professional back in 2010. This is his 12th year as a pro. Again, if you're watching this, you're watching on YouTube, you're watching on Facebook on the Boxing Insider page. Well, call your friends, tell them, because the price that you paid worth the price of admission. You know what? This was certainly worth whatever they would have whatever. charged. They didn't. They, they're giving this to everybody as a gift. That's what Larry Goldberg does stuff, with stuff like nice that. Nice combination by uh, Perez. Saloon does what I call, he's, he gives you sneak attacks. He does. He will back up and look like, he gives you the look like he's almost afraid to be in there. And then he jumps in and he can hook. He's got a terrific right hand. And I love his right uppercut. Nice right hand by Saloon right there. Again, nice body shot, followed up with a body shot. And, and, and vice versa with Perez. And the thing that's exciting about Saloon is he can pick it up and throw 100 punches. I mean, he just has great endurance. Another 
one minute to go. Round number two, again scheduled for eight rounds. Boxing Insider Promotions with yet another tremendous card tonight from Sony Hall, a nice packed Sony Hall nice in the heart of New York City in the theater district. Nice body shot by Saloon. That was a right, a thudding nice right hand. Nice combination. Side. He's landing some great shots. Three jabs, one down, two up. Got to give him this round. Heading to the bell here in the second. Randy, I have two rounds. Nadim Saloon to none for Perez. Here's some action from that last round. Big shot to Platinum Hands Boxing Studios in the building tonight. They were Queens, New York City. Platinum Hands Boxing Studio. The view that our boxing inside the cameras well, now we're looking into the corner of Saloon. Before, you were taking a look from the front of the room into the back where they got the stage all set up in, in just earthy kind of colors. It's, it's a very spectacular view, yes. and you can see all the people there sitting there, they're standing in the back. This is an SRO crowd tonight at Sony Hall. Only adds to the show, a beautiful show. All good fights. This one, these guys are, they're, they're technically light heavyweights, because anything over 168 is light heavyweight, but they, they like to think of themselves as super middleweights. Saloon, 170.2 and 169.4 for Carlo Perez, as they go at it against the ropes. To Carlo Perez and the Dark trunks. Jerry, he is not known a to be a, a, a one-shot knockout right. hitter. He's got six knockouts in his 26 fights. Well, yeah, and I, I, he's not punching like a puncher. He's falling in. There's no body in it. It's just arm. Uh, but he did land some great shots in that last uh, bunch of punches from him. A couple of wicked body shots there by DiCarlo. There was no feeling out in round number one. Here we are in round number three. Minute and a half gone in a round. And certainly, these guys are not feeling each other out. They are bombing away. Nice combination. Wow, this is unbelievable. That's a nice combination by Perez. No quit, no quit, no quit in Salim. Saloum is really known for having great stamina. He actually yeah. wore his last opponent out. The guy basically couldn't stand up under his attack in the sixth round and folded up a couple months ago. Saloum, here we go, he's on his way back. Jerry, do you like the fact that Saloum tries to keep this in the center of the ring? I think it's he's amazing, a guy. You know, he's not really got the shape of a fighter. He's a good puncher. He, he places his punches well. He takes a good shot. This is round number three, scheduled for eight in this super middleweight bout. And another action round comes to a close, making Jerry Cooney work on the scorecard. 
nice combination, three punch combination, right before the bell by DeCarlo Perez. Look at that action right near the end of the round, Jerry. A four-fisted assault by both guys. It wasn't one guy pounding on the other. It was both guys willing to slug it out. <laughs> they just keep getting better, man. They just keep getting better. That's a close fight I got right now. Saloon 29 to 28 for Perez. Two rounds to one. Round number four. You heard Jerry Cooney's scorecard. If you are scoring at home, how do you have it scored? Saloon's got great movement. He's fainting, he's moving. Not giving him easy shots. I think so far it's been a little bit more of the combinations of DiCarlo. Nice combination right there by Perez. DiCarlo has been committed to the body work, but then Saloon comes right back with a couple of more shots of his own. Basically, well, he's not a a headhunter, he is going to the body. There he tried to double it up. There he went downstairs with a hook. Borderline shots. Referee Sean Clark you know, stays Saloon, in the middle of them. Right. Saloon really got in with a guy who can fight tonight. He's not a puncher, but he can fight a little bit. You know what I mean? He's got some skills. See, he's reaching for the punch. He's not using his body. Come back with the hook, though. You know, Saloon, who we mentioned, is managed by Adam Glenn, the son of the late great trainer, Jimmy Glenn. Jimmy once said, I said, but Jimmy, the guy is not a, a knockout hitter about some fighter a long time ago. He said, you know what? But when you move your hands, if you're not a knockout hitter, then you're not hitting a guy with one big knockout shot, but you are painting him, and you might hit him with ten times as many shots. Right. I agree. That's the story of it. But Saloon is a little bit of a bigger puncher than his opponent Perez right now. But if this guy Perez, he's got some skills. And it's giving Saloon a little more trouble. And a little warning there about pulling the neck to Saloon from referee Sean Clark. Pressure being put on by DiCarlo. Now, DiCarlo Perez is throwing three, four punches at a shot. That's how fighting is supposed to be. Not he just threw six punches in that exchange. Well, right. no exchange. Again, again. Still in the round again. He's still in this round. Saloon trying that long jab to the body. Nice round. Final seconds, round number four. This one has gone half the distance. You gotta be enjoying this one. And it's a tough one to score. It's tied up right now, 38-38. It's, you got it tied up? Yes, I do. So Jerry's got it two rounds apiece. He's got it 38, 38. Now we do know Saloon can pick it up towards the end of the fight. Once you get the crowd get going, they're gonna cheer him on. He's gonna pick it up and can Perez keep up with that? That's what we gotta see. You were just looking into the corner of Saloon, and one of the things he wants to do, Nadine Saloon, who comes from 
Lebanon. He lives in Brooklyn, New York. Jerry said one day he would love to set up a gym in his native country of Lebanon, and he wants to help all the, the kids who need help and point them in the right direction with athletics, not necessarily to make them boxers, but just to point them all in the right direction. Listen, man, the fighters are great guys for the most part. They're great guys. They, they want to be helpful. They want to make the world better. And you know what? And they want to win. Right. We also talked about it, and he said, you wouldn't believe how many young, talented kids are over in Lebanon. He sees himself one day managing some of the young fighters who are going to be developed coming from Lebanon. Well, I like it. He's very determined. I think that I agree. I think the guy messed up the wires over there. Nice, nice uppercut by uh, Saloon. Now here comes Perez firing back. Traded right hands. So here we are in round number five. We don't know how the judges are scoring it, but I know how Judge Jerry Cooney has it. Nice body shot with, to the left, with the left hand by DiCarlo. Nice left hand by Saloon. And again, downstairs with that hook by Saloon. And DiCarlo too. And the watch this, he's going to turn it over. Watch this. Jerry, oh. this is like demolition derby. Yeah. Nice combination. Listen. What a fight. Whoa. Nice, nice right up. By that is, I think, his best punch of the fight. And that might be his best punch overall, the right uppercut. Wow, nice hook by Perez, and a right uppercut to the body. Wow, these guys are firing away here. Put round number five down as one of the rounds of the year. I remember when I was a kid, my dad used to take me to Demolition Derby in Freeport, Long Island where the cars would just keep ramming each other until only one car was able to drive. That. This basically is Demolition Derby. Nice combination, boy. What a foot of that. I got to give it to Saloon this round, but it's very close. He's had a much better round. Final 15 seconds. Round number five. Scheduled for a super middleweight. These guys gave it everything they had in that round. Round number five, I'm putting that one down for my list. Round, one of the rounds of the year. 180 seconds of fistic action. Look at the book of the rewind. Wow, what a, what, a, what a round that was, you're right, man. A look into the corner of Saloon. He took a deep breath. Doesn't look any worse for wear, though. Well, he's in shape. He's in great shape. This is round number six. Let's see if they can repeat that action. Jerry, somehow, I, I doubt they can repeat the action we just had I in that we, terrific I, fifth round. I think we just may see it in the, in the eighth and last round. Again. If it goes that far. So going into that fifth round, you had it even. How did you give round number five? I gave five to uh, Saloon, 10-9. So you got... But it was close. You got Saloon coming on a little bit now in the fight. I think you've given him the last couple of rounds. Uh -huh. No, I gave him the first two rounds uh -huh. and the last round. Okay. 
it looks like he's trying to get in close and use that right uppercut a little bit more. That is his big punch. Although that left hook there, that was a nice shot to the body by Saloon. And Jerry, he won his last fight on a knockout in the sixth round when he just wore his opponent out. Right here. He, right in this very building, in this very ring. Do you see the same kind of thing I happening? Do, do you do. see DiCarlo fading a little bit? I think his corner, you know, Adam Glenn has done a great job in researching his opponents, and I think that this kid is getting worn out, and, and Saloon picks up the action. Nice right hand by Saloon. DiCarlo willing to stand right in front of him, lands a jab there, takes two more jabs. Misses with a jab. Nice hook by DiCarlo. Then works nice the body with a combination. combination. Neither guy very quick, but both guys are throwing everything they have. Nice combination to the body by DiCarlo. Nice right hand to fire back. About 45 seconds remaining. Round number six. Are we going to see eight complete rounds here? Or is somebody going to go? Wow, look this combination. Wow. Big comeback there from DiCarlo. And Saloon returns the fire. Just a tremendous fight. And the referee, Sean Clark, letting them fight. Body shots by both guys. Say their names. De Carla Perez and Nadine Saloon. Jerry, look at this non-stop action. You know what? You're 100% right, and these guys both still want it big time. They're still fighting for their lives, and that, you got to love it as a fan. And what better place to put it on than Larry Goldberg's card? Boxing Insider Promotions with their second professional show. The last one was absolutely terrific. This is even better. Wow, what a fun night. The inspector over here in the corner right near us, near the corner of DiCarlo, telling him, get out of the ring. Seconds out. <laughs> They're not listening. And they start round number seven where they left off in round number six. Okay, Jerry, a quick look at your scorecard because we got to kind of, we got to figure out 58. what. 58. Jerry's adding everything. <laughs> Let's see, 10 plus 9. 56. And they don't stop to Carla Perez. Rip some body shots. Take some head shots. Saloon moves away. Tries to keep it mid-ring. This is an amazing fight. Nice combination. Nice combination. By Perez again. Jerry, a few weeks ago, we were ringside at Madison Square Garden for Teofimo Te Lopez main event against Sandro Martin. In any round of this fight, the guys would throw him a punch, and I think in the entire fight. And you're not kidding, it's, it's true. And Lord knows, they got paid a lot of money. I don't know what these guys are getting paid, but it's not enough. Nice 
Nice combination by Perez again. And I know this, people are watching all over the country on Facebook Live, on YouTube, on the Boxing Insider YouTube page. They're getting this for free. And they know this is a holiday gift. What a fight this one is. Body shot with the left hook and he... He missed two of those. I'm gonna tell you something. Perez got the, got the best of that, that exchange. Still firing away. Final 35 seconds of the seventh round. Nice hook by DiCarlo. Perez. Nice body shot by Saloon. Nice move. Score. Jerry, we got three more minutes to go. This is anybody's fight. It is anybody's fight. I gotta give this round to Perez. End of round seven. One more to go. One point now. One point. 67 for Saloon and 66 for Perez. It's close. So you got. Where's the band? Saloon slightly. A little bit. Very close fight. Who finishes? Who finishes this round? And we know that Saloon is a finisher. But Perez has got a lot of guts too, and a lot of pride. Here we go, eighth and final round of the super middleweight contest between Nadir, Nadim Saloum, nine and one, against De Carla Perez, 19, six and one. They touch gloves. John Clark says, "Go get him!" And here they go one more time. Wow, what a, what a round! How about you go back to your corner, and the corner on both sides says, what you gotta win this round. A fight. Nice exchange. Nice saloon. Again. Coming up on the two minute mark. Eighth and final round. Not Dean Saloon. In the white trunks with the red. DiCarlo Perez in the dark trunks. They will not stop. No letdown on either fighter. Well, they both won uh, so bad. Jerry, so I. Bad. I I am hoping we're going to see a draw here tonight. Wow, it's a great fight. Carla comes back with a combination. A couple of the shots landed, a couple missed. They are mixing it up, body comes and back head. Again. Nice body shots. Turn two over. Come on. Wow. One minute, 15 seconds to go in this terrific fight. We said there was going to be a boxing party tonight, nice punch and there is. What an exchange. What an exchange to finish this round out. 48 seconds left. Winter has just started. It is cold in most places around the country. It is burning hot here at wow. Sony Hall in New York City with this terrific fight. Nice right in by Saloon. 20 seconds to go.
referee Sean Clark has done an amazing job. He has let them work. He hasn't broken them up. And they are going to finish strong. Final second. Wow, what a fight. Fight is over. Jerry Cooney is on his feet. This crowd is on his feet. I don't know who won this fight. I am really pranked for a draw. They go back to their corners. And I tell you what, if there is a winner, there could be a winner. There will be no loser. Unbelievable fight. After the decision is read, whether it's Saloon who wins, whether it's DeCarlo Perez who wins, if it's a draw, I would love to see the fans throw things into the ring like dollar bills. It's a draw. Fight's a draw. You got it a draw. Unbelievable fight. Me too. party Jerry Cooney your scorecard you've got it 76 76 that's what we draw. got 76 76 what a great fight it's got to be a maybe a two Saloon Perez two how about that most way Vargas you just put on your headset just talk for a moment no I think I think our guest we we're gonna have 140 pounder Josue Vargas is on with us, but apparently his headset is not working. You can hear, but we can't hear you, buddy. Yeah, the red lights are shown all over the place on his. Oh, there you go. Now I hear myself. Okay, Josue, I think we got your green now, baby. Yes, sir. Who won the fight? Oh, it was a tough fight. I know it was a tough fight to score. Um, you know, I like Nadim. That's my one of my teammates as well. Jose Guzman trained Nadim. Well, and it was a tough fight to score, but I will give it to Nadim. He was boxing beautiful. Let's find out. Let's find out right now. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of boxing warfare, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge John McKay scores this contest 76 to 76. Yes. Judge yeah. Anthony Lundy scores the bout 78 to 74. And Marcel Varela scores this contest 77 to 75 in favor of the winner by way of majority decision. Nadine. I told you. I knew it. So I knew that. Wow. Majority decision for Nadine Saloum. I feel so bad for DeCarlo Perez because world-class judge John McKay had it. 76-76. Jerry, that's how you scored it. I would have loved to have seen that. Let's bring in very gifted 140-pound fighter, Josue Vargas. Josue, would you have been satisfied with the draw? I would have. To be honest, I would have, but um, I see why not D1. Like I said, he was boxing his, he was he was using his skills, his boxing skills, his ability, and he was making miss at times. And I saw that, and then he would connect beautiful combinations. Are you friends with him? Yes. I know Nadine, but it that's not a, why I picked. No, why it, he it was a draw. I felt we all felt it was a draw. Very good fight. I wouldn't be mad at a draw. I it wouldn't be mad. It, it, yeah. it demands a rematch. Right. Sony Hall, if you're having a good time tonight, Let, I want to hear you. And again, we're here. 
with Josue Vargas from New York, and you had a controversial fight back in the summer. Yes. Against Samoa Santana. Against Dakota Lingo. Oh, Dakota Lingo, yes. Where referee Ron Lipton gave you every opportunity to continue in the fight. And personally, I thought you were on the verge, but you were doing your best. You were avoiding punches. And I saw you avoiding punches. You were rocking, rolling, leaning on the ropes, slipping, right. sliding. I saw most of those punches missing. And I thought while you were in trouble, Clifton was doing an okay job when the commission jumped up in the ring and stopped the fight. Sitting here asking you this question, and you look back at it, what were your thoughts then? Have you seen the videos? Was Lipton right in letting the fight go on? So, I thank you guys so much. It was tough watching my video, my own video. Um, it took me about two to three months to watch over the video again, over the fight on YouTube. And when I look back, I see I got caught with an over right hand shot. It was a wild shot. I did not see it coming. I didn't see it coming. He caught me. He touched me. I stumbled for a second. I did a mistake not taking the knee. I should have taken the knee. But since I slipped and the ref said it was a slip, I had a little bit of time to recover, but I didn't. In time, I did not recover in time. So, to be honest, if I say I was hurt, maybe a little. Not to the point that I don't know what I was doing. So, what he did was put in the pressure. When I did get up from the slip, um, he started putting the pressure. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, you've let us know you're having a great time tonight here at Holiday Fight Night, brought to you by Boxing Insider. Right now, I've got a question for all of you. Are you ready? One more time. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is our main event of the evening. About to make his way to the blue corner at this time, here is Marvin Solano. Coming up now in the main event is Andy Dominguez, another friend of mine. I watch him grow up. Um, that's one of the guys that I saw. Is that right? Yeah. We actually was training together. When he first started, I saw, I saw him come into the gym, and I saw his hunger. I saw he was hungry. He would not miss the gym and come every day and wear his ass off in the gym every day with Lupin. When he started with Lupin. Now, he, make a, now, he made a change in Vegas. We're on Salido, which is Here a great is opportunity to be training with him. So I can't wait to watch him now in the main event. Andy Dominguez. Are you a big fight fan? We're talking to Listen. Way of Vargas, a big fight fan. You follow yes. everything? I be on BoxFest every single day. <laughs> I know everything was going on. Is there any one fight that you're really waiting for in 2023? For me? No. In general? Yeah. I can't wait for Tank Davis and um, Ryan Garcia April, April 15th. It doesn't get bigger than that. What about for you? Would you like a rematch with Dakota Linger? Of course. Of course. I would love to fight that man again because we all know he don't have the skill set that I have. And, it, and I will be back in the summertime. I'll be back maybe June and July. God willing. Good. I can't wait to see you back in the ring again. I can't wait either. And Josue is sitting in with me and gentleman Jerry Cooney at Sony Hall. We got our main event. Very popular Andy Dominguez against Marvin Solano. Andy Dominguez always look good. Always look flashy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event of the evening at Holiday Fight Night brought to you by Boxing Insider. 
It takes place inside of eight rounds in the junior bantamweight division. Referee in charge of the action is Shade Murtaugh. John Bazili, Robert Perez, and John McKay are the ringside judges. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Señoritas y caballeros, están listo! See who says it's not listo. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're ready, let's go! And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you the competitors. First, in La Esquina Azul de Managua, Nicaragua, standing five feet, seven and a half inches tall, weighing at 114 pounds, con un record. 24 victorias y 7 derrotas. 8 victorias via noqueo. Te presento Marvin Solano. And his opponent. En la esquina rojo de Las Vegas, Nevada. Standing 5 feet, 3 inches tall. Weighing in at 113.8 pounds, con un record de ocho victorias y cero derrotas, seis victorias via noqueo, te presento Andy Dominguez. The very popular Andy Dominguez, one of the prospects of the year. This guy is 8 no, 6 knockouts, Marvin Solano out of Nicaragua, Managa, Nicaragua. 24 and 7 with eight knockouts. I'm Randy G, the commission, along with my longtime Series XM partner, former heavyweight contender, Gentleman Jerry Cooney, and 140 pound prospect, Josue Vargas, who is looking to have himself one heck of a 2023. That's right. Wiping out a loss back in the summer of 2022. Get that one. Just continue. You got too much ability. That's right. Here we go, Sade Murda. In this eight rounder, these guys are basically flyweights, but they're fighting just over the flyweight limit. Andy Dominguez, 113.8, 114 pounds for Solano. Technically, they are super flyweights, but they really can't fight if they had to easily under the 112 pound limit. Andy Dominguez in the white trunks, Solano in the black with yellow. Now listen, Dominguez 8 and 0, with six knockouts. So he's got a lot to prove tonight, and uh, this is in there with a tall guy who's got a good career, good, good record. So we see what he can do, break him down. Marvin Solano is 24 and 7. Well, and he is the taller of the two fighter. He goes close to five foot eight. Swinging away, baby. Here we go. They're both taking some heavy leather in this first round. I think Solano Marcus. is about close to 5'8. You heard me say Andy Dominguez is 5'3. And Josue, they, I, I don't see any way that he could stand on the outside. He's really got to get close. He gives away height, gives away a lot of reach. He's got to get close, doesn't he? Andy Dominguez, he's the type, I'm, like I told you, um, I know that Andy Dominguez since he first started boxing, which was like six six years ago. And I know he's, a, I know he's the type of fighter who's going to put the pressure, no matter if you're small, tall, big, sm or anything like that. He's the type of, he's a pressure fighter. He's a, he loves put putting pressure, and he likes ducking in. Okay, so And kind of punching. That's the type of fighter he is, so. And right. that's the only way he can really fight for because of his size. Yes. Okay, the mouthpiece is just washed out. But I just believe Andy Dominguez, was, he was just born to do this. You can just tell his technique, his skill set, bobbing and weaving punches left and right. And it's only the first round. In his very last outing, Dominguez, we saw him right here in this building, in this ring, he fought Ricardo Caraballo, who was 7-1 and one and knocked Caraballo out in the first round. These guys are all throwing home run punches right here. They, they want to knock out. 
Marvin looking very uncomfortable. He's not going to go. This, this fight will not go the distance. You don't see that, Jerry? No, I see this. Whoop! The swing from the bleachers. He don't like the pressure. Marvin do not like the pressure. You can tell already. And it's only the first round. So like Jerry Cooney said, it won't go the distance. I believe that. Plus, wait, have you ever sparred with Andy Jamaica? Nice right hand by no. Marvin right there. No, not even playing around anything like that, no. Never got to. Nice round. End of round number one. Between the tall Marvin Solano out of Nicaragua. He's very awkward. And of course, my favorite fighter of all time came from Nicaragua, my buddy, the great, the legendary Alexis Arguello. All right, yeah. You might be too young. Yeah. You know a little bit about <laughs> but, Alexis? Yeah, of course. My dad likes him a lot. These, both these guys are landing a lot of shots. And this guy came in to win it. He didn't come to be an opponent. See, Jerry, that would be a great opening if you were a boxing writer. You'd be right. Solano did not come from Nicaragua to New York to be an opponent and have a loss. That's a long flight, isn't it? Huh? That's a long flight, isn't it? Yeah. We are here at Sony Hall in Midtown Manhattan in the theater district in front of a packed room at Sony Hall. I'm Randy G, the commissioner, along with Gentleman Jerry Cooney and Josue Vargas. I see. You, you, you see that uh, Dominguez is working that body. He's throwing those jabs to the body. He's going to come over with that right hand soon. Or the hook. Yes, he want, that's what I was about to say. He want to come with the hook on top. From what okay. I see, from what I see, Andy Dominguez got way better being in Vegas getting the right training camp, sparring the right fighters, and getting all the work that he needs. And I see him, in, I see his develop. You see him developing, right? Yes. I like the way Andy is using his lack his of head height, movement. getting underneath those yes. shots. He's getting hit with some good shots while he's coming in, so. I'm glad they got a world-class referee in there, Shande Murdoch, because these guys are getting a little bit rough in the center of the ring. When they grab each other, they are showing each other how strong they are. Like that. Talking about the ref, he was my referee for um, when I fought in Barclays in a, on the undercover, Sean Porter and Keith Thurman. Oh, sure, yeah. I fought Ryan Piku that night. Yeah. And he was my ref. I think Solano speaks any English, so I'm not sure if he understood anything that Shade Murdoch just said to him. He should understand that he keep grabbing, holding. Hurt right hand by Dominguez. He got hurt. He that got was, hurt. He's hurt. Dominguez. But he's coming back. A finisher. Well, he's firing back. Solano's firing right back. Nice uppercut. Nice Marvin, body shot. Marvin like did not came here to, to lay down. He definitely did it. In his seven losses, Solano has been stopped only twice. Yeah, he came here to fight. Well, he's getting worn out right now. He's getting lot, hit with a lot of body shots. It's slowing him down and it's leaving his face wide open. And Dominguez is re relentless. He's not slowing down. We have had one fun part here tonight. Sony Hall, here we go!
a fight of the year candidate. Rounds of the year. Possibly one of the rounds of the year. And Jose, you weren't with us for that last fight, for that, that one for Nadim that we just saw with Nadim Saloon. And DeCarlo Perez was truly one of those eight round undercard fights of the year. They never let up. Right. Now they called it a majority decision for Saloon. I would have loved to have seen a draw. That would have that to me would have worked. Would you like to have seen a draw on that one? I mean, like I said, I wouldn't be mad with it if it if it was a draw. Um, yeah. You know, if anything, right now they should just have a rematch. There we it go. More, it was a majority decision. Jerry, he knows what he's That's talking what about. about. Yeah. It would be a good rematch right here. Yes. Every fight's been great. Why not do it again? This is round number three, scheduled for eight rounds. Our main event tonight. Super flyweight, just over the flyweight limit. Andy Dominguez, undefeated in eight fights against Marvin Solano. And Jerry, Andy Dominguez is one of our prospects. I will tell everybody right now on Sirius XM, uh, we have a list of prospects, and Andy Dominguez is one of them. We won't tell you who our prospect is, but Andy is one of them. I think it's great, and I think that the shots these guys are taking, like Solano, are no good for him in the long run. This guy's taking solid shots from Dominguez. I mean, it's really... There goes those body shots again. I could tell you, Andy Dominguez is in great shape. Definitely. Being in Las Vegas, high altitude, coming to New York. Yeah, because of his size, he's got to work a little harder. Yeah. He really works hard, so he's got to be in good shape. For sure. Nice right hand to the body by Dominguez. And his determination is phenomenal. Good right hand. Who's the matchmaker for the show? Do you know? Eric Botcher wow. is the matchmaker of record. Great matchmaker. And in case I don't get to mention it again, we want to thank our statistician providing us with so many of the stats. Charles J. doing his usual great job. Everybody here at Boxing Insider has done just a tremendous job in putting this whole show together. Another round comes to an end. So, Josue, I'll put you on the spot. I'm going to put Jerry on the spot. This is scheduled to eight. Do you think it's going to last the distance? What I see so far right now, of course, Marvin has the experience, and he's using it. Fighting um, Andy Dominguez. Andy Dominguez bringing the pressure. But what he does, grab him. Or he starts using his boxing skills. But um, I see it going the distance. I yeah, do see they, it. They're Jerry? putting out a lot, of, a lot of energy. They're putting a lot of energy out, and they're tired now. It's, it's a tough fight. And I think you're, for that reason, it could go this, unless someone lands a, right. a, a shot. A heavy shot. But at the end of the day, it will be, at the end of the day, it will be great experience for Andy Dominguez, who got eight fights, fighting a guy who got 31 fights. So there's a learning experience yeah, for true. Andy. And Here so I, we go. I remember in my sixth pro fight, I fought a guy 45 fights. Dropped him three times, but it went a distance. How many rounds? Six rounder. Yeah. 
He's fighting back. It's great to see. Marvin uh, Solano is in this. This is round number four of our main event. Boxing Insider giving you a holiday present. And yeah. it's still time. And You're it's a great it. education, Randy, for Dominguez to fight a guy this good. Like he was saying, he's got so many fights. Mm -hmm. the, the experience he has is going to make uh, Dominguez a better fighter. Nice hook. Andy landed some good, clean shots in there. Good body shot. Another good body shot. Nice right hand by Solano. Over right hand. See, keep in mind that the last time out, Andy Dominguez won on a first round knockout. Yeah. And we talk about this all the time. First round knockouts look great. The crowd goes crazy. The fans go crazy. But what do you really learn? Nothing. In a fight like this, both guys are learning a lot. Listen, like Jose said, he's training in Vegas, altitude, a lot of endurance. You come here, it's a piece of cake. But this guy's a tough guy. He's in there tonight. He's not going so easy. As a grandma, he, he does has 31 fights, and he has eight. Yeah, and you know, you got to think about the guy like this coming from out of the country. Nicaragua. He's in a tough tough fight. He's, he's all alone out here. Nicaragua fighters are very tough. Well, you look great. How's your holidays going? Oh, it's going fantastic. You know, um, I, li I live now in Orlando. I'm from the Bronx, but now I live in Orlando. Beautiful. And I landed today. When I landed in New York, I felt, I felt good. Yeah. First time back home? Since two months ago. Two months ago. You I'm got a good camp down there? Yes. Good. Always. A lot of spawn too, right? In the good weather as well. Nice right hand again by Solano. And he picked him up with a body shot. Look at the punches he's throwing. Right. They the both Marvin oh, throwing some good, nice one, two shot, but he's missing. And he's blocking the shot nice and perfect. His defense is there. His defense is there tonight. He's getting hit a lot, too. Who is? Andy. That's They're both right. getting hit a lot. Yeah. Solid shots. But that one, too, he just blocked. I still am thinking about that incredible fight we had earlier. One of the the undercard fights of the yeah. year between Nadine Saloon and the Carlos Perez with Saloon winning a majority decision over eight rounds. What a fight it was. And I know that on YouTube you can watch it back again. And on Facebook as well, which you are watching for free tonight, promoter Larry Goldberg has given you something that promoters just don't do. He says, you know what? I want to give the fans something for free for the holidays. Let the fight fans enjoy it. And wherever you're watching us, we hope you're having a good time. And they are. And we are. We all are. So happy holidays to all of you. This is our main event. Referee Sade Murdoch gets between them. Good defense. Good Very de good defense. He's learning a lot tonight. Oh. And he's looking sharp, isn't he? He is. Well, I mean, obviously, this guy is not a big puncher. Right. So if Andy's in with a guy that can punch, he's got to be very careful. He's getting hit with a lot of shots tonight, too. I agree. He's winning the whole fight, but I mean. 24 and 7 is Solano with eight knockouts. Many of those shots are being blocked, though. But Solano doing a lot of what we've seen many of your Nicaraguan fighters do. And, you know, he is built along the lines of the great Alexis Aguayo. Tall, lanky, left hook to the liver kind of thing. And that's why 
I said is the experience. The yeah. experience that he has. 31 fights. He's using the experience against a guy who has eight fights. Although Alexis, I got to tell you, could Nice really right whack. hand by Solana right there over the head. Hit him on the head. I want to see Andy go to the body more. I don't think he went to the body enough this fight. So far. Wow, he's got the fight in him. He's got the fire in him, I can tell you. Over right hand by Andy. Good shot. Salerno is as well, right? And these guys are picking it up. Here in round five, 30 seconds to go, round of five, number five. What I like about Marvin is he's going to get hit and he's going to come back with four or five shots. Now oh. we, okay, he just leaned on him. He's, He's gonna getting get a tired. He's there. getting tired. He's getting a little tired. Jerry, when a guy is leaning on you like that, should you be pushing him back or just stay down? No, you don't. St you don't push him back. You're using your energy. You're draining yourself. Just gotta try and get it, get him out. Let the referee grab a hold. Good fight, bro. Round number six coming up. This is an eight-rounder, correct? Eight-rounder. Every fight tonight has been an eight-rounder. And we're joined at ringside here by a very exciting New York 140-pounder, Josue Marcus. Yes, Do you have sir. anything lined up? Um, I'm try like I said, I'm trying to make my comeback early June or July. What do you think about Regis Pro Gray? Um, he looked great. It was a great fight against him and, and Cepeda. I watched the whole fight. I sat down and watched the whole fight by myself. You know, I fought Cepeda late in 2021 in Madison Square Garden. But it was a great fight. It How would you like fight. you and T. Fimo Lopez? You know, I helped out to Fimo Lopez for the Lomachenko fight. Oh, did you? Yeah. Wow. Was, and I can say it was amazing sparring oh, between yeah. me and him. Only if y'all was there to watch it. <laughs> Josue Vargas joining us here. 140 pounder Josue Vargas from the New York area. Former he heavyweight contender, gentleman Jerry Cooney. And former New York State Athletic Commissioner Randy G here with you guys. You have watched one heck of a card. A Christmas present, a holiday present, just a party here, holiday fight night, given to you by promoter Larry Goldberg, who you're going to be hearing a lot wow. about, I think, in years to come. I love the heart of these two guys. Nicaragua against Mexico, you can expect nothing less. You can expect nothing less. I like that by Andy. It reminds me of myself. <laughs> Where does uh, uh, Andy live? Or in the is Bronx. He, is he from? He lives in, in the Bronx. In the Bronx and he trains in Vegas. And lives in Vegas right yes. now. What a fight. Nice left took off the head there for uh, Dominguez landed a good shot there. Wow. Marvin landed something special there too. Good one too. Ooh, this, oh. Under one minute to oh go, God. round number six. Look at that, so... Solano follows him. He gets hit with a couple of shots. He goes right after Dominguez. To 
terrific action fight here tonight. We've seen a lot of terrific action tonight. We started it off with a middleweight bout, which saw Alejandro Silva up his record to 20-0 with a first round knockout over Isa Samir. And every fight on the card has been action packed. Hard right hand to the stomach that by nice Dominguez. That was maybe his best shot of the fight. At the bell, Solano kind of glares back at Dominguez, but that was a nice round for the little guy, Andy Dominguez. Is, I this, is this Andy first A round of fight? Is this Andy first A round yeah, of fight? Yeah, I think it is. I'm not sure. He may have fought six rounds of last time. I remember when Andy used to always hit me up on Instagram on DM. How many miles, Ashraf Josue? How many miles? How many miles do you do for an eight-round fight? And now he's fighting eight rounds. Look how he's looking. In great shape. Yes. Looking great. What was the last fight, Andy? the ninth fight, professional fight, in the career of Andy Dominguez. Okay, and he never went, a, no, you he know never what? went seven, the seventh round. This is the seventh round right now. Let's see how he looked this round. Yeah, this is his third eight rounder, but in the other two, his last eight rounder, he knocked the guy out in the first round, and then one before that, he knocked the guy out in the fourth round. He has right. not traveled eight rounds yet. And he never won seven, so let's see how he looks in this round. Both of these men are absorbing a lot of punishment. Good shot. Oh, hard hey, uppercut by Solano. You saw the head snap of Dominguez. Yes. You hear his crowd, his New York crowd. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's so hard. You're fighting a guy that tall, it's hard. It's hard when they know how to use their distance. Well, yeah, and you know, you. But Marvin the more you climb up the not, ladder, yes. the harder it is. Yes. This is round number seven, midway through the round. Oh. Be careful, guys. Right there, I wanted to see Andy go to the body. I was suspecting he was going to go to the body there, right. but he didn't. Solano coming back this round. Uppercut by Solano. This guy doesn't get tired. You see what Marvin is doing, right, Jack? Jerry Cooney? Yeah. He's leaning with his chin to get him tired to get Andy's tire. And that comes from what? Experience. Oh, no doubt about it, that's right. And he keeps fight firing back. Solano is, just keeps firing back. He's got all the heart in the world. The, the matchmaker that they put for this show, they did some job. Well, I don't think Solano is gonna win this fight. No, but he's teaching a, 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 a yes. Learning experience for Andy Dominguez. He's having a much better round here, round number seven. You know, from this fight, from this fight, Andy is gonna learn a lot. And no he's just gonna get better and better. I wanted to see, I was not here for Anthony Sims, but I would have loved to see him. How did he do? 
It's on TV. Anthony Sims. Sensational. Yeah. Tough fight. Right? Tough it was fight. distance? What a show this one has been. What a job the referee has done. We're looking into the corner of Marvin Solano as he's getting ready to come out for the eighth and final round. Up off his stool. They both ready. For the Sade last Murdoch round. gets him ready. Let's see if they touch each other's gloves here. No touching. The crowd picking up the decibel level, rooting for the guy who does come from New York, Andy Dominguez. Solano's firing back. He's fighting back in the eighth round of a fight. He's way behind. Look at that combination. Good full Four shots. Punch combination, solid. Yeah, Solano. Nice body shot by Andy Dominguez. So we have seen knockouts here tonight. First round knockout. We have seen a majority decision. We've seen a round of the year. I don't know if that's going to get any points for a takedown, but they've been getting, they've been employing a lot of rough stuff throughout the fight. Solano pulled away from the referee who's having a the ref is taking a point from him. And he's arguing with the referee. I don't think that was right. I don't think that was a good decision, in my opinion. I don't know. He was he, firing back. He's been back. pulling in. And he came. He was bull rushing him. I thought Sade did a, the right thing there. Andy, 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 Andy. Everyone here for Dominguez. Everyone. Referees have a tough job, don't they, this way? I mean, they got, they got to be watching every little thing that goes on. Oh, yeah? Well, let me just tell you something. <laughs> Marvin Solano doesn't have an easy job either, bro, in his hometown <laughs> of, uh, you know. That's right. He's done a great job. Yes, he has, and I'd like to see With him seven again. seven losses under his belt. Solano came in with a record of 24 and 7 with eight knockouts, but came all the way from... Managua, Nicaragua. Nice body shot by uh, Dominguez there. He's still working that body. Trying to find it upstairs. Nice hook, nice hook. Off balance. No knockdown. Marvin, he, Marvin was off balance. He's been doing a lot of that. And the reason he went down, he came bowling in. And he's been doing a lot of that tonight. Wow, what a finish, huh, guys? And you know what? What a finish. If this was going to be a close fight, that point deduction ruined it for Solano, but I don't think it's going to be close at all. 30 seconds left. Let's see what happens here. Great fight for both these guys. For all the guys on this card. This was a tough matchup for Andy Dominguez, and we had a feeling it would be. Final moments. Eight seconds. Oh, the well, five final moments of this card. What a card it has been. What a fight this has been. When Andy, when Andy Dominguez sees this fight, he's gonna see his mistakes, and he's gonna see that he learned from this fight. Because when I, when, when I was fight, when I was, when I fought for the IBF North American title against Paul Noel Murphy, yeah, I watched that tape. Every single day, every day I wake up, I'll put on the fight because I learned from that fight. It was about, it was about my first ten oh, yeah. rounder in Madison Square Garden, and I learned a lot from that fight. Marvin thinks he got it. Marvin no. Solano, right <laughs> <No>. above <laughs> our boxing insider position here, fell to his knees and said a little prayer because he might be thinking. He did, that he, won it. he did put on a great show. He did. But did he win? No. There you saw an overhand right by Solano. They slipped and then there. he pulled yeah. in and they, they just bumped bodies and they fell. 
the scorecards are being marked, and I, I just have a feeling. Unanimous. It is going to be, Jerry, do you have a close at all, or who do you no. have winning? Seven rounds. Okay, seven I'm out of eight seven. rounds. Mm -hmm. so you got it like 79, 73, or 72. Because of the point that It's close. It's just close. How much you got it, Jerry? I got T1. He won clearly. I mean, he did. The other guy fought back good, but he yeah. won the he won the round. But he's also seven losses under his record, right? Travels the countries fighting the toughest guys. That's tough. He's got he's got to get better. Dominguez does. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's good to see you. You look great. Oh man, I'm I'm just ready for 2023. I don't know if you remember, Jerry. You did an interview. So, in your office you about did. two years ago. Yeah. You were on our Sirius XM yeah. show. Yeah. I'm Sirius XM. We got to do it again. For sure. Absolutely. So before the decision comes, Jose Vargas, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank Have you for having a me. great Looking. holiday season. Let's see the scorecards. They... We don't have a decision yet. I think we're just about ready. So, again, Jose, thank you so much for joining us here. Happy holidays to you, buddy. Happy New Year. Thank you so much, and stay tuned for 2023. I will be coming very soon in the summertime. We look forward to hearing from you yes, a sir. lot more. And now, the decision, are we ready? Oh, the longer a decision takes, I get very worried about decisions when they don't happen right away. Jerry, I thought he, I thought Jose Vargas brought a lot to the table here today. He did. Yeah. Listen, he's a very smart guy. He knows the game. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of junior bantamweight action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Sean McKay scores this bout 78 to 73. Judge John Bazili scores this contest 76 to 75. And Judge Robert Perez scores this bout 78 to 73. For the winner, yeah. El Ganador, via decision unanime, by unanimous decision, Andy Dominguez. No surprise there in a very interesting competitive fight. Andrew Ruiz won about seven of the eight rounds in the fight. He upped his record to 9-0 with six knockouts. What a card it's been. Congratulations to Nadim Saloon with a win tonight. Majority decision, a uh, real upset by Ndia Smith. She upped her record to 6 We thank you all for being here, ladies Salim and gentlemen. Enjoy Anthony all your holidays also this won. season. He's still Have unbeaten. a happy new year. And also, Thanks for spending the night with Alejandro us. We will Luis see you Silva in 2023. Round Please knockout. reach your destination. It has been a tremendous show tonight. It really has, been. We, we want to thank our promoter, Larry Goldberg, Boxing Insider Promotions, our entire Inside Boxing team, for our statistician, Charles J., Larry Goldberg, Sonia Lamanakis, host Wayne Vargas, and gentleman Jerry Cooney. Jerry, it's been fun as always. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. And you got it, baby. Fun. Great show tonight. Great fights. Love it. Love it. Have a very happy New Year, everybody. A safe one. Signing off from Sony Hall in New York City. <laughs>